Good morning and welcome to day 20. Uh, we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 18 through 22 this morning. And there are quite a, a, a number of verses in this passage that can really trip people up that uh, are, are very controversial in, in how people look at them and how people interpret them. So I want to be very careful about how we handle them this morning. Uh, starting out in, in verse 18, uh, Peter really initiates what is, is a wonderful reminder for us about the relationship we can have in Jesus Christ. He says in verse 18, he says, For Christ also suffered once for sins. It's an amazing truth for us to know that Christ didn't have to die more than once. He didn't have to suffer more than once for sin. He defeated sin, death, and hell all at one time, and it only took one time. It's a wonderful truth for us to know that we don't have to constantly need forgiveness of our sins, that we don't need to, to constantly worry about our eternal state of, of, of how we're going to end up, whether, whether when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, whether uh, there's some sin in our lives that may uh, take us away from that salvation, that hope that was, is within us. We know for sure that we have eternal life because... Christ did it once and once and for all. And then he goes on to say, the just for the unjust. Christ being the just one. He, he, he did no sin. He was righteous. And he died for us who were, who were the unjust. We, we have no reason to be freed from the debt that we owe. And yet Christ did that for us. Why? So that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. He, he did all of that. He suffered once for our sins, being innocent, for the, doing so for the guilty. He did all of that so he could bring us into a relationship with God. What an amazing truth that we start today off with is that we are made alive. We being dead, we are, are spiritually dead. We are made alive because Christ brought us into a relationship with God. Now here's where it gets a little bit more on the controversial side. In verse 19, by whom he uh, also he went and preached to the spirits in prison who were formerly disobedient when uh, once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water. This is a little bit more on the complex side. When Jesus died, what happened in the time that he was dead? We know that he died on Good Friday, rose on Easter Sunday. So what happened in between? Well, Peter is dealing with that a little bit here. He doesn't give us a full description, but what he does tell us is that he went and he preached to the spirits in prison. Now, he is not here preaching the gospel to people who have died. That is not what Peter is talking about here. When you die, your, your eternal state is sealed. Whether you have accepted Christ or whether you have rejected him, your eternal state is sealed at that point. He is not preaching the gospel to people who have had their eternal state sealed. But what he is doing, and when we're talking about these spirits, especially when you reference the, the, these uh, spirits who were formerly disobedient in the days of Noah, you're looking at demons here. You're looking at demons who, who had a, a large influence in, in the days of Noah and, and caused the, the, the sinfulness in the world to be result in the fact that there were only eight righteous people in the entire world. Jesus goes to those, those demons that were imprisoned, that were bound, and he says, I've won. You may have thought that you defeated me, but I've won. I've defeated sin, I've defeated death, and I've defeated hell. I've won. And Peter goes on, and he's talking about uh, uh, this, this analogy that he makes with Noah. And he says that, you know, divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, and, and, and God was very patient in those days. While the ark was being prepared, and Noah preached all the time, 
trying to save people, trying to get people away from the judgment of God, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. And then he says in verse 21, there is also an antitype which now saves us. This, this antitype is this comparison that, that uh, uh, Peter is making here. He's saying that uh, as Noah was saved in his day, as Noah was saved from the judgment of God by his faith in God, those who ex exercise their faith in God now will also be saved from the judgment of God. But those who reject that, those who, who mock God's, God's word, his, his, his uh, offer of a relationship, those who slap their hands away from that, are going to have to deal with his judgment. And he says, now there is also an antitype which saves us. Baptism. And this is where another one gets controversial. Baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The question here is, if we read this on face value, does baptism save? And a lot of people have said, well, yes, baptism is an element of our salvation. That is also not what Peter is saying here. We don't, we don't just baptize people as part of salvation. Baptism is not salvation. What it is is an identifying with Christ. But baptism here is talking about spiritual baptism. When we are made one with Christ. Through what? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the faith in the gospel who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having all been made subject to him. See, everyone, believer and unbeliever alike, are going to have to be subject to Jesus Christ. They're going to have to submit to him. In fact, scripture tells us that in the end, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Whether you believe in scripture or not, there will be a day where you will stand before him and you will confess him as Lord. What a wonderful truth for us who believe to know that our God is in control of it all. I hope you take that truth away today. And next time when we get into this, we're going to start chapter 4. I hope to see you then.